<laughs> Hello, welcome back. This is my workshop. This is my silversmithing side of the workshop. So these are all my tools at the moment. That looks like a creepy person, but it's my rolling mill. This is the storage side, so just ignore that side. And this is my pottery side. As you can see, there's this really big gap we've just made down here. This is my pottery wheel, and in the gap is going to go my kiln. So this is a 43 litre kiln, top loading. Oh yeah, it's locked. Yeah, it's really cool. This is my first ever kiln. And it's going to go in this corner here. Um, but I'm going to get some sockets installed because this can't run off of an extension lead. It has to be a mains connected kiln. So we're going to have two sockets here for the kiln and the wheel. I'm also going to get two plugs installed over here because at the moment I've got a, an extension lead <laughs> travelling along the back of the workbench. I'm plugged into there for my light and my pendant drill. What we're going to do today is replace these shelves. I don't know if you can tell, <laughs> but they are furry with green mould. It's disgusting. So I bought these uh, garage shelves, advertised as, but supplied with MDF shelves. And like most garages, this one gets a bit damp. And also, <laughs> The weight of the clay is making it sag, so I need to replace these shelves. So I bought some OSB board. That's how disgusting this thing is. Gross. It's just slightly bowed, but with some weight on there, it'll be all right. It is fitting in. Four more to go. Got four planks of almost the same length wood. I'm going to be making an adjustable plaster casting mold with this and these. This is some corner brackets. So the mold goes like this, and then you adjust it by deciding how far together you want it to be, so you can have quite a small mould or you can have it quite far apart. You attach a bracket like this so that it is proud from the edge. So then you basically just slot the mould together like that. And you do the same on all four, so every, one, every plank has one bracket on the opposite end to the other bracket. There's a bit of a gap there, so I need to pull it over and make that as tight as possible so that the uh, seal will be nice and snug on the inside. That was extra tight. You'll obviously want to be on a different surface to this, this is not suitable for it. So I'd get a nice flat piece of wood as the base and then seal around with clay, seal up the side cracks with clay and then put your object in, pour in the plaster, wait for it to go off and then demold. And then you've got a plaster mold from a cheap wooden mold frame. And it's nice and easy to store because you just take it apart and then stack the planks together. You could obviously use thicker pieces of wood, so you could have a deeper mould. Nice and simple mould frame. This is my pottery station at the moment. It's a bit of a mess. Um, shelves are down here, so I'm going to go put them in there. Got new sockets there for there now. I can just plug my light and my pendant drill straight into there.
It's revolting. Okay, so I've taken the extension lead out from behind there. Those are my light and my pendant drill plugged in. And then there's a spare for the Ultra Sunny Cleaner, which is really handy. I've got the new shelves on and lots of space for glazes and other clay that I've ordered. And then when we've got some muscle, we can hoist the kiln into that corner and then that's ready to be plugged in. And then we can start making some pottery. I'm about to do the first firing of my kiln, which is a bisque fire to basically oxidise the coils in the kiln. And it's meant to be quite a smelly thing, um, smelly first firing. <laughs> so you don't really want to do it if you're going to be out here, because I don't have an exhaust on it. But it's in the garage, so it's not going to be, um, I'm not going to be out here around it whilst it's doing it anyway. So I've got a bucket of some water. So there's nothing to do with firing the kiln. But I'm going to apply some bat wash to the kiln shelves and this is to protect them from glazed spillage. Um, not entirely sure what it's made of but I need to wear a mask so that I don't breathe it in while I'm mixing it up. And then paint it on um, two to three layers as it dries. Then I'll stick those into the kiln separated by kiln furniture which is little chubby things which are over there which I can't see because it's out of focus. And I think I'm out of focus now. Um, and then put the kiln on to fire for about 12 hours, I think it's going to last for. <laughs> and another 12 hours to cool down again. And then it'll be ready to do some bisque fire, some actual pottery, and then some glaze firing. Which will be exciting. Thank you. Good. This is the bat wash. I'm not sure how much to mix up. I've only got a small amount of water in there. First firing. It's 19 degrees inside the kiln. Okay, program one. Start. This is what the ceramic side of my workshop looks like now. Got some shelves there that my brother put up for me. Nice chunky shelves. I've got buckets that are going to have glazes in. I've got pots with slip that I've coloured with some pigment um, and then I've got some pots up there that are drying some that are still wet and need to be finished <laughs> so this is what the workshop looks like now so you've got the bats this is what you throw the pots on buckets with glazes see so some of the colours I've got this is coloured slip um, slip is basically a liquid version of clay and then lots of tools this is where the clay lives. I've got stoneware, a plain and a speckled. These are the stains for colouring the slip and you can colour clay with it as well. Uh, at the moment I've got pastel colours but I've got some more colours coming. This is kiln furniture, so this goes inside the kiln um, to separate the shelves, depending on how much space you need. I've got some bigger ones that are in the kiln at the moment. These are tongs for glazing, so you can hold the pot in that and then dunk it. Got some scales for measuring out the clay. Got a drip bucket for catching spills from the, the wheel. The wheel's a bit mucky at the moment because I was trimming pots earlier. This is completely unrelated. <laughs> but this is my pegboard with clamps um, and a saw. And also this is unrelated. <laughs> this is my workshop sign. Thank you, Lewis. <laughs> and uh, obviously the kiln is there. And then I've got a bucket of water because I don't have any running water so I need a lot of water for cleaning up and you need water when you're throwing pots as well. And then over here we've got some pots that have been fired. They've been bisque fired so they're, um, they're still quite fragile but they've had one firing. Um, this one is partially glazed. I tried to glaze it but realised that the glaze was a bit too thin so I had to order some more glaze powder so that'll get replaced when that arrives. So yeah, these ones have been bisque fired, so 
they're now ready to glaze and then these ones I've just finished. I did this one a couple days ago. It's just an oval serving dish. This is a plate with a slip foot ring so I used a syringe to pipe that out <laughs> um, and it's upside down at the moment. And I've got a mug which I've just finished. So this is my third attempt at a mug. These two, they're not perfect. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they, they were good practice though. This one was going to be a mug, but it got a bit too dry, so I just left it as a pot. And I've got a cereal bowl, um, and then a little pot here. So these are drying out, they need to become bone dry. So like the colour of the edge of here, this in the middle is still too wet to go in for a bisque fire. So when they're all this colour all the way through, then they can go in and be fired for their first firing. And then they'll be at the same state that these are. But I'll probably do a glaze firing before these are dry enough to do a bisque fire. So these will be finished probably first. Um, and these have got a coloured slip on that... Hello, can you focus? These have got a coloured slip on, so there's blue and yellow um, and that dirty colour at the bottom is actually wax <laughs> which you put on to stop the glaze from sticking so the bottoms are all waxed because you don't want any glaze on the bottom because it will stick to the kiln shelf and then you'll lose the kiln shelf potentially or at least break it trying to get the pot off and you'll definitely lose the pot oh and this is my workbench <laughs> which there might be a video about it's not quite finished yet um, that back leg's a bit wonky I need to straighten that out and I need to add the frame along the bottom so that there's a shelf down there, um, and then I need to attach my vise, which is down there. That's what that is like. So the next pottery video will be me throwing some pots on the wheel, bisque firing them, glazing them, um, and then firing them again, and then you'll be able to see the results. And it's it'll be my first time um, firing pots at home, which is really cool. You. You're so comfy. You always move that bit out of the way so you can snuggle up in its corner. Oh, he's so comfy. Thank you. Thank you. 